Welcome, Coach Art community. Thank you so much for joining me today for our guided painting lesson. My name is Eric Rodriguez, and I'm a program director with Coach Art. For the folks that don't know who Coach Art is, we're a nonprofit organization that provides free arts and athletics lessons to students impacted by chronic illness. Uh, and we are national now. That means we're accepting students anywhere in the US. So if you know of anyone of any children impacted by chronic illness between the ages of five and 18, uh, send them off to our website. That's coachart.org and we can get their application started. Uh, this also means we're accepting volunteers anywhere in the US. Uh, so if you are somebody who is uh, 18 and older uh, that has a, uh, a passion and interest, you'd like to teach uh, one of our students, I also encourage you to go to our website and we can get your application started. Uh, great. So as far as today's uh, artwork, we're going to be painting uh, this piece inspired by birch trees. Uh, birch trees are super, super uh, awesome, awesome trees. I love the way they look. Uh, you can find them in uh, the northern parts of North America, uh, where it's very, very cold. Um, and as far as uh, how the lesson's going to go, we are going to be taking it step by step. I'll be uh, showing you what colors to mix, what brush strokes to take. And by the end of the lesson, you would have painted your own rendition of today's artwork. Uh, as far as uh, lesson materials, I'm going to be using an 11 by 14 canvas panel, but you're welcome to use whatever you have at hand. Uh, we'll be using only three colors this time. This includes uh, blue, black and white so only three three colors i'll be using uh two brushes a flat brush that looks a little bit like this and a round brush that's more on the thinner side uh but again you're definitely welcome to use whatever you have at hand we'll need some cleaning supplies including uh water to clean up your brushes as we go some paper towels um and either uh, two pieces of cardboard or paper plates. One of them is going to be used as a palette, so we'll be mixing our colors here, while the other one is going to be used as a fan. So we can speed up the drying process for some of these uh, sections. Um, and actually, one more piece. We are also going to be using a cup that looks like this. Uh, we're going to be using it so that we can make a nice circle. Um, for the moon that we see up here. Uh, this isn't super, super required. You can always uh, freehand your circle, so no worries. Uh, but this just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, great. So I'm gonna be uh, setting up here really, really quick. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments and we will get started shortly. So I'll be removing the art piece for now, but we'll definitely be uh, revisiting it often so that we can use it as a reference and see where we're headed with our painting. All right, so let's take a look at the artwork. So notice uh, the different elements that we see here, right? We see this uh, midnight background. Uh, we see a moon, some stars at the very top. Uh, and of course, uh, the birch trees uh, with some markings and also some shadowing. Uh, so before we get started, I wanna ask you, uh, what can you do to this artwork so that you can make it a little bit more your own, right? Uh, whether that be using different colors, uh, it doesn't have to be a midnight uh, sky, it can be, um, a, uh, a, a fall scene, right? Where uh, you use uh, uh, warmer colors instead. Uh, maybe you don't wanna add a moon, a full moon, and you wanna add a crescent moon, right? That could be pretty cool. Uh, or maybe you wanna make your trees a little bit uh, bigger, a little uh, thicker, or maybe you wanna add even more trees, right? So I encourage you to um, uh, take those opportunities to to use your own creative uh, decision making wherever you see them, okay? Uh, and then that way you can you can add your own little flair to the artwork. Uh, so as far as uh, the first steps, we're going to be working on the background, and then we're going to be moving forward. So that means we're going to be creating um, uh, the the background that we see here first, moving with the uh, then the moon, and then lastly we'll be adding the trees. Uh, so to begin, we are going to be using. We're going to be creating a midnight blue color. And we do that. 
So sorry about that, folks. Uh, we do that by um, adding some blue and then some black. Uh, my dog's a little excited right now. Someone's at the door. I apologize for that. Um, you okay? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be pouring out some blue. I poured out um, uh, a little over a quarter, but actually we're gonna need a little bit more. So maybe um, about the size of two quarters, the coins, and we're gonna be adding a little bit of black into the mix. So that way we can darken our blue color. And I'm gonna first start off with just a little, a little dot, maybe a little under the size of a dime. Um, black is a strong uh, color, so we want to make sure that we always add little by little until we reach what we need. Uh, so once you have your two colors, feel free to mix them. I'm going to be using my flat brush. Awesome. And once you uh, start mixing your colors, you're going to start seeing a darker shade of blue which can be a midnight blue, a navy blue, right? Depending on what name you want to use. And then for this one, we're going to go ahead and start uh, painting horizontal brush strokes. So from one side to the other, uh, closer to the middle uh, section of your canvas. Uh, the top section, we're going we're gonna to blend in with some black, while the lower section will be uh, adding some white into the mix. Uh, and then this way we can create uh, a nice uh, a midnight uh, a background that has um, uh, the, the bottom part can either be considered like some snow, right, um, where the focus is, is mainly on the trees, so the background is a little bit blurred, right. Awesome. So I'm leaving about the same size um, for each each section. So the top section, it's about like three, three inches that I'm leaving blank where I'm going to add some black and the bottom section the same. We're leaving about um, three inches closer to the bottom section too. So right now uh, we're, we're uh, adding our um, first base. Uh, once we add all the other colors we need, we're going to make sure we blend each section nicely uh, and that we can see transitions between each of them. Cool. So now for the next step, we're going to add the black uh, closer to the top section, right? When I poured out uh, some black, maybe about the size of a, of a quarter, um, we're going to go ahead and paint this top section. Awesome. And actually, we, we don't want to go too low. So we're going to go ahead and add some more blue here in between. Awesome. And since we've added these two colors, we're actually going to go ahead and start blending them. All right. So a nice trick to blend is uh, the more you brush, the more you're going to blend, right? Um, as long as the paint is still... Um, more on the liquid side and hasn't dried yet, uh, this will definitely work out. Awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure we cover all of the um, sections right up here before we move on to the white part.
Then we can go ahead and start adding some white to the uh, bottom section. So I'll start off by pouring some on my palette. So again, about the size of a, uh, a quarter. Um, and since we were just using black with this uh, brush, uh, go ahead and, and wash it off a bit. That way um, our white doesn't turn into a gray since we still have a uh, black paint here, right? And then with the white, you just want to brush uh, here closer to the bottom section. Um, it's definitely going to turn uh, some, ty some type of uh, like lighter blue, right? But that's okay. We just want to make sure that we're able to, to really blend the sections where each of the colors touch. That way we don't see a huge, huge uh, apparent transition, right? So this might mean uh, adding a little bit more of the, uh, the dark blue that we were using. Awesome. So now that we have uh, our three shades up here, let's go ahead and, um, and really take our time to fix all of our brush strokes, right? We want to make sure that uh, the lines are nice, uh, nice and um, blended, right? So we, we can start off with the top section and this is going to be a last scan that we do uh, before we start drawing and moving on to the next part. And if you notice some of uh, your areas, maybe if they become a little bit too light, right? Or if you went a little bit too high, uh, you can easily fix that by just adding uh, some more of that dark blue on top, right? Um, and then that way you can, you can darken any areas that, that you want. But I think this looks good. I have a nice uh, transition from a lighter tone here going upwards, right? And once we add our birch trees, um, the background is going to be uh, a little bit more hidden, right? Since the, uh, the focus is more on our trees. All right, folks, I think that looks good and we're good to go. Uh, great, so then for the next step, what we want to do is uh, dry our background, right? And uh, this is where these uh, your additional paper plate or maybe piece of cardboard uh, comes into play. So you want to make sure 
you have something that you can use as a fan. Um, so here's uh, this plate. We just want to uh, speed up the, uh, the drying, right, for the entire canvas. And uh, a quick tip, if you use two plates, uh, the wind currents are a little bit stronger. So I always try to use at least two. All right, that's definitely drawing up. Uh, we're gonna be focusing on uh, closer to the top section. Uh, so you can definitely put an emphasis on, on that uh, since that's where we're gonna be adding uh, the moon and then also some, some little stars, right? All right, folks, so this is almost completely dry. I just need to go ahead and get something really, really quick. I'll be right back. All right, it seems like uh, the top section is definitely dry on my end, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Uh, so the next step is gonna be to place our moon, right? Um, so I, we wanna make sure we're being intentional about where we're placing it because we wanna leave some space, right? So that we can be able to see it. Although you can also maybe add a, a smaller or thinner uh, tree in the mix so you can block it, right? Depending on what, what your preference is. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and lay it out exactly how it's here. So I'm going to be placing it uh, closer to the uh, top uh, left corner and giving enough space where I can add uh, two birch trees on each side. So that's going to be my plan. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a, good, a good practice to visualize where you're going to be placing your elements. That way you have a, you have a plan, right? Uh, if you have a plan, you're you're going to succeed. Uh, it's more likely that you will succeed. Uh, so I'm going to be using this cup that I mentioned earlier, and this is to help me make a, uh, a nice imprint of a circle. But if you don't have a cup, you're also welcome to uh, freehand it, right? But what I'm going to do is uh, paint the, the outline or the edge of the cup with some white. Uh, you want to make sure you... Um, you really, really paint each each side. 
That way, uh, once we stamp it, we can see a nice circle. Um, and it's only going to give us the outline, right? We're going to paint the inside. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to be placing it up here. There you go, now we have a circle. <laughs> Uh, so once we um, once we've done the outline of the circle, we can go ahead and paint the inside. So for the inside, we're first going to paint it completely white, and then we're going to add some um, some shadowing, right? Using a little bit of gray. So for this step, you really want to try your best to stay within the line. Uh, although if you do uh, paint a little bit outwards. Uh, you can always uh, fix it by making the moon a little bit bigger, but no worries. You can also use a smaller brush for this step um, so that you can be a little extra careful, right? I think that's what I'm going to do now. All right. Cool. So now for the inside of the moon, we um, are going to make a, a lighter, lighter gray tone, right? We're not going to use a lot of this. So um, actually, if you already have some black on your palette, all you want to do is uh, grab some of that white, put it off to the side, right? That way um, you don't use the, the entire amount that you have there. And just grab a, a quick smidge of black. Go ahead and, and mix it. And this is a color I got that's actually a little too dark. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, repeat the process. But this time I'm gonna add a little bit of gray instead of black. So that'll definitely make it lighter. All right, and awesome, there we have it. So this is the gray we want, right? We don't want it to overpower the, um, the moon. We just want it to be a light, um, a light addition. So all you need to do is um, just lightly dab it in areas, uh, in areas where you think it'll, it'll look nice, right? So I'm, I'm uh, dabbing it closer to the top section and going a little bit lower. Awesome, and then we've added a little bit of shadowing to our moon. So this is a great way to, um, to paint full moons. Um, and if you ever have the opportunity to paint larger full moons, those are always very fun. Because you really get to um, uh, just give them a lot of dimension with this technique, right? Uh, so the next step is going to be to add uh, just some dots closer to the top, and these are going to be uh, stars. And for this step, uh, you can do it in you can do it uh, in two different ways. So the first one is using the back of your brush. You can dip it into some white paint and lightly press it. Right? If you press it and you uh, let it stay there for a couple seconds, the dots are going to be a lot bigger. Right? But if you do a, just a quick little jab, uh, the dots are going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, one of my other favorite ways of doing this is. By using the tip of a pencil. Check it out, Cochart branded pencil. <laughs> uh, but it's the same step, right? You just want to dip the tip of your pencil into some white, so like this, right? 
Now the tip has, has white, and then you just wanna go ahead and press it onto your canvas. Uh, and I actually like this step a little bit more because um, the, uh, the back of your brush can sometimes be a little bit too big. It, it's really depending on what you need at the moment. You can use uh, either of these, um, these uh, uh, techniques. So we can go ahead and, and add some stars. Um, another thing you can add instead of stars can be like snow, right? Uh, so if you wanted it to be a little bit more winter, winter theme, you can definitely add uh, some snow into the mix, uh, either now or maybe at the end of, um, as, as a final step. And some of these are going to be covered by your birch trees, right? So it's, uh, it's best to add a, a couple more than what you think you'll need. Um, that way we can definitely see some of these uh, once we've added our trees. All right, that looks great. Cool. So before we are able to move on to the next step, we want to make sure uh, our moon and our stars are completely dry, right? That way, once we add our trees, um, the the paint won't be uh, won't be shifted. It won't be um, it won't be blended with our trees either. We want to make sure it's a nice dry surface. All right, folks, we're almost there. We want to continue the drawing. And uh, at this moment, you can start maybe visualizing where you want to place uh, your trees, uh, how many of them you want to you wanna add. Uh, the original painting has three, four, five, six of them. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, you can add more. You can make them a lot thinner so you can include more in them maybe even have a mixture of uh, thin and thick, right? All right, folks, I think it's pretty much dry. Uh, cool, so let's go ahead and look at the artwork. So what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna go ahead and position our trees. So that means we're gonna uh, give them their basic shape so we can know uh, uh, 
sorry, so that we can make sure that they fit wherever we want them to, right? So this is a, a great way of um, adding your elements, making sure that they're that they're gonna be fit, uh, they're gonna fit, they're gonna be nicely placed before you start adding all the details. Uh, so that involves us using our flat brush and with white, we're gonna start from the very top of each section and just go down. Um, and then that way we can place them where we want. Uh, once we do that, we can focus on giving them uh, the width that we want, right? Before we start adding the details of um, these uh, chipped areas, right? Birch trees, they're very, uh, uh, you, you know, it's a birch tree based on, on these markings, right? I think that's what makes them look cool. And that's uh, the bark layer uh, coming off, which you can actually use it as mulch. So if you have any birch trees at home and you see them uh, chipping away, uh, you can uh, save them for, um, for your front yard, right? And you can use the mulch for that. But awesome, let's go ahead and, and move on then. So we're gonna be using our flat brush uh, and we're gonna be using white now. So you wanna ensure that the brush doesn't have any traces of blue paint or uh, black paint. Uh, that way the white stays white, right? And we uh, are able to see a crisp color that we're then gonna uh, give some shadows to using a, a little bit of gray. But awesome, let's go ahead and, and try out these, these um, sorry, and, and lay out some of these uh, trees. So I'm gonna start off by pouring out uh, some white, right? It's about a little over the size of, of a coin, of a quarter coin, and we're definitely gonna use more, but this is a good way to start and adding more as, as we uh, need. Uh, cool, so I'm gonna start off by adding one here very close to the edge. And this is gonna help me visualize the rest. All right, so there is still a little bit of blue paint on that side, so it became a little bit of a, of a light blue. But no worries, uh, once we start adding the rest, we'll come back to this one and give it another coat of paint. Um, so another thing to note when you're adding your trees is uh, you wanna leave some space in between them so you can add some branches, right? Uh, if they're too close to each other, um, it might not have the same effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another one this side all right awesome that one came out great and you can also play with the size of them right so what i mean by that is if you press your brush a little bit more you can make them a lot thicker all right so this one's definitely noticeably thicker compared to the first two and trees come in all shapes and sizes. So it's good to have a mix here. Awesome. Um, and there's one tree that I'm actually gonna add until, until later. That way we can have this tree be uh, closer to the foreground, right? The one that's closest to, to, to us. Can add another one here. Oh, this one has a little bit of a uh, like a swing, right? <laughs> All right. Cool. So that looks great. So we have a total of uh, five trees for now, and let me show you the artwork so you can see what I mean. So I add added uh, five trees before I added this final one. And this final one, um, nothing super special about it, right? Just that it's uh, uh, this tree behind it. And you can see that it's behind, right? The branches is, is behind it. And this just gives your artwork a little bit more of a dynamic feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. For now, uh, these are our first trees. So let me go back to this one that needs just another coat of white. All right, 
There you go. That was a lot more crisp, right? Uh, cool. So now what we want to do is um, you want to check each of your trees and make sure that the paint actually uh, stick, right? So let's say on this side, um, there is some areas where the paint didn't really cover the section I wanted it to. So I'm going to go back and give it a little bit more on the edges. And also you want to make sure that the bottom section has, has paint, right? Don't want to leave that empty. All right, I think that looks pretty great now. Uh, cool, so then the next step is gonna be to add some shadows to, to our trees, and then we're gonna finish them off by adding uh, the branches, but also the, the markings on, on them, okay? Uh, but for starters, we wanna go ahead and create a lighter gray. So let me show you uh, what I'm talking about, right? So if you notice the trees, uh, they're initially they were painted white, but there are some sections that you can see have uh, some gray shadings, right? Some areas are a little bit darker than others. Um, so you wanna play around with that. So for starters, let's go ahead and make uh, the gray that we need, right? So I have some white off to the side. I'm actually gonna need more, more, uh, since we're gonna be using quite a bit for now. So I just did a, a, a little bit more and I'm gonna grab Again, just a smidge of black with the corner of my brush and go ahead and mix it with that white. Uh, we don't want to use a lot of black, just a bit for now, and then um, we can add more uh, as we move on. So check out the gray that I'm using. It's very light. It's very, um, and it's gonna be uh, uh, closer to the same, the same tone that we're using right now. Right, but as it dries, it'll be a lot more noticeable. So for this one, I'm giving it, uh, I'm giving a shadow on the right side. Right, um, and you can do the same all throughout. Uh, for this one, I'm going to give it a shadow on the left side because wherever the moon is is, is at, right, uh, whatever is facing the moon is going to be a little bit brighter compared to whatever is on the other side. Awesome. And then the same for this one, we'll go ahead and add a shadow on the right side. And then for this one as well.
All right, nice. Uh, so next we can go ahead and start adding some of these branches, right? And for this one, I'm gonna use just a, a smaller, um, a, a smaller flat brush like this one. Uh, it's just a little bit, a little bit smaller. Um, and for the branches, you can also play around with the, with the shade of them. They can be uh, a darker gray, they can be white, uh, just depending on, on where you place them. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and do a couple of um, with different shades, starting off with uh, some of the darker ones. So I'm gonna make a, a darker gray right now by adding a little bit more black into the mix. All right, so here's an example. The darker shade is the one that I just made right now compared to what we were just using. And for this one, uh, you just wanna make some, some branches, right? So you can play around with the size of them. Uh, also the, uh, the position of them, right? I'm gonna leave some space up here for uh, some lighter, lighter ones. Awesome, now I'm gonna uh, shift colors and, and use a, a lighter gray for the ones closer to the top. So now we've added uh, our, bran uh, sorry, our branches, um, and actually I should add just a couple more on this side. It looks a little empty. Hmm. Awesome. So now what we want to do is start adding uh, the markings that we see on birch trees, right? And for this one, um, you can, uh, we still want to do it the same way when it comes to the colors, right? You can do different, different shades um, and the markings can be very, uh, very dynamic, right? They don't have to be the same, the same uh, style. Like for this section, I'm going to make some, uh, some horizontal lines. All right, just some very small markings. Oh, 
almost as if uh, somebody was uh, training with their sword over here, right? Uh, and making these cuts or these incisions. Uh, you can also play around with the size of them. Um, so for this next one, I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more on the thinner side. So for that, uh, I'm just uh, squishing my my brush, right? That way it stays um, in the same, in this position. Just dipping it onto my paint. You can also play with the direction of them. Uh, they don't have to all be the same, the same shape, right? So for this one, I'm just gonna do some, some crazy stuff. Just add uh, different brush strokes, different shapes. Awesome, and we're almost done here. So the last one is gonna be uh, to add, or the last step is to add this this final tree, right? One that's a little bit closer to us. I'm gonna shift uh, brushes and use the um, the larger brush I was using earlier, and I'm just placing it right at the center of these two. And it's definitely okay if the tree is covering some of the, uh, the branches that are behind it, right? That's actually um, the, uh, one of the intentions here. Awesome. Okay, and then for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and add, give it a um, shadow, but maybe no branches, just to see what that looks like. Uh, the final, final step here would be to add those same markings that we've added to the other trees, right?
Awesome. All right, folks. And there you have it. We have our Midnight Birch Trees. Uh, if you followed along with me or if you uh, do the tutorial later on, we'd love to see your artwork. Feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, if you're a coach or family or volunteer, you can always email it to us as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And next week, we are going to have another Facebook Live tutorial on Thursday, 12 Pacific time, uh, with Coach Antonia. So you won't want to miss that one. Uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.